In this lesson, we will learn how to create end particles. End particles make up just a part of Maya's really neat and robust N dynamic system. So the system is driven by nucleus, which is a very user friendly and again powerful dynamic system that is used to create some very realistic looking effects. And we have a lot of control. We'll take a look at that so we can get a, a good foundation as to how to work with N particles and other properties of the N dynamic solver. All right, so we're going to take this much further than just working with particles in this course. Now the goal here is to fill up our play pit with a few ball objects that are dynamically driven. So this is going to be pretty fun. Now, how do we go about creating particles to begin with? Well, let's head over to our module over here at the top left. And instead of switching over to dynamics, we're actually going to work with end dynamics. You'll find that the end dynamic system is, again, a little bit more powerful, more user friendly to work with, and it computes very fast. We'll take a look at that very soon. All right, so now it's time to go to the particles menu and choose create particles. We'll head over to the top just so we can tear off this menu and bring it over. All right, so take a look. We have different particle types we can work with and different ways we can create particles. Starting from the top, we can use the particle tool to allow us to click and create a single particle. And then we can use the create emitter tool to generate particles from a single emitter. We're actually going to use that in this lesson. We can emit particles from an object, which is going to either emit particles from the components of a selected mesh or from the volume of that mesh. So we'll also take a look at that and fill object, another really neat way to generate particles. We can use this to let's say fill up a glass with water and that's what we'll use it for. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at some water properties that we can adjust to get some more realistic looking results. All right. So again, it's going to be a really fun course. And then we have some particle types here. So points, well, you get the idea. It's going to give us a point type particle. And then balls, this is going to be the form that we use. It's actually working with the blobby surface. Cloud, it's going to work with Maya's cloud system to generate particles that are sprite based and by the end you can get some really cool looking cloud effects with this and then the cloud kind of works the same way only it's driven with fluids now water this is kind of like balls in that we're using blobby surfaces but we have many more options with water that will give us some very realistic looking properties that we would expect from water so we'll take a look at that soon but let's say we jump in and start creating some particles. What I'd like to do is go ahead and use the balls type. And then I'll head over to create emitter. Let's go ahead and just reset our settings. You'll see here just from looking at the top that we're working with an omni type, meaning the particles will be dispersed in all directions. And then it's going to create a new solver force, a new nucleus node. That is the heart of this system. That's what drives all of our end dynamics. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that very soon. Let's go ahead and now click on create. No need to name this just yet. And here we have it. Now if we were to go ahead and hit play, you'll see that, all right, there we have it. Our particles are being generated. Super cool. A few things to keep in mind. One, we should go ahead and adjust our timeline to something much greater so we can have several more particles in our scene. You'll see that that is going to affect how many particles we work with. That's much better. Another thing to keep in mind is our playback speed. Let's go ahead and head over to our animation preferences, either from the bottom right of Maya, or of course we can go to window settings and preferences and head over to preferences at the top. From there we can go ahead and move down to timeline or time slider. There we go. And let's go ahead and make sure our playback speed is set to play every frame. Why not use 24 frames per second? Does that mean it's not going to work? Let's go ahead and choose save and play this through. Take a look, it's working just fine. Then why use play every frame? Well, simply because we want every frame to be evaluated. We don't want any frame skipped. Can you imagine if you're working on a much more complex particle simulation and things started to lag? Well, you want every frame to be evaluated because if that is not the case, you'll skip over a few frames and your simulation is not going to turn out the way you would expect it to. Now what we can do is cap the playback speed 
and we can use our max playback speed option here to do that so free is going to go through every single frame whereas we can go ahead and work with 24 frames per second if we'd like if you wanted to switch this to 30 frames per second you'd basically head over to settings there we go and then you can go ahead and change your time to 30 frames per second and that's what you would use all right so i'm going to go ahead and make sure that we check our time slider settings again making sure that we're working with play every frame and real time 24 frames per second as our capping point all right so now we're going to choose save very cool let's say we go ahead and take our emitter and translate it up what i'd like to do before we do that is head over to the outliner and perspective view it's a good idea to keep track of all of the nodes that we'll be working with now in the past in older versions of maya we weren't given the nucleus node we'd have to go to display and go ahead and uncheck dag objects only so we can view everything but it's nice that we have access to the nucleus node now because it's super important let's go ahead and turn off the uh, dag items or turn them back on so we're only viewing those but it's super helpful that this is accessible now much easier because we're going to be using this quite often to control things like gravity wind effects uh, the scale of our system we could also use this to figure out a start time because chances are you don't want to start your particle simulation on frame one a lot of times you want it to start before that frame let's say a thousand frames before to kind of have your particle set settle before they start to interact with other elements in your scene but sometimes you may want to have it start at frame one but we'll take a look at these properties very soon but what I'll now do is go ahead and grab the emitter and translate it up so we can start to fill in our play pit. All right, so let's go ahead and refresh the system by simply going back to frame one using our playback controls. We'll go ahead and make sure we're brought back right back to frame one so we can go ahead and hit play and take a look at our simulation from this new starting point. Very cool. All right, so this is pretty fun, but we can go ahead and take this a step further. What if we wanted to generate more of these ball objects? Well, what we would do is head over to our emitter, which we currently have selected. We can now go ahead and press Control A to move over to our attribute editor and take a look. We can start to adjust our rate. Now, here's the exciting part. If we were to go ahead and hit play, you'll notice that this is actually an interactive way to tweak your dynamics. You can go ahead and start to increase this or decrease this to take a look at the changes as we play through the sequence which I find to be super helpful so we'll go ahead and increase this just a little bit more now speaking of increasing our our particles here what I'd like to also do is increase their size now you wouldn't do that from the emitter you do that from the particle itself so let's go ahead and go to the particle shape tab and here we can go ahead and find our radius parameter underneath particle size We'll be using this later on to create a really cool fire effect. But so we don't get ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and just use this right now to increase the size of our ball objects. Very nice. Awesome. Now, a few things to keep in mind. Again, the nucleus node is the brain or heart of this engine. If we were to go ahead and take this nucleus node here and delete it, what's going to happen when we hit play? Nothing at all. These objects are not going to move. They're just going to stay put because we've cut off that main system, that driving system. Now, if I were to go ahead and bring this back and start back from the beginning and start playing back the animation, all right, we've seen this before. Now, here's the exciting part. We can freely get rid of this emitter. If we were to go ahead and delete it, you'll notice that the particle simulation is going to continue through until the last particle, and then it's just going to stop. But I'm going to go ahead and undo that back because what I'd like to do is go ahead and start to work with this emitter a little bit more to start having our objects interact with this surface here. Now, how do we do that, by the way? Because right now, I mean, this looks cool, but our job's not getting done. What we need to do is go ahead and turn this into a passive surface. So the passive surface is simply just a surface that, again, will interact with the end dynamics particles, and it's going to allow us to have this act as a way of making sure our particles will bounce off of this or in this case fill in this gap so with this selected we'll head over to Enmesh and right at the top you'll find create passive collider 
Now watch this. When we play back the animation, you'll notice that our objects are actually going to start getting filled in here, which is super cool. Now, let me go ahead and show you something. I'm going to actually stop this simulation at a certain point. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and maybe disable the emitter. I'll go to the emitter and I'll uncheck enable. Let's go ahead and play this through just to see what happens. All right, so when we do that, you'll notice that our particles are not going to fall into this, this hole. They're just going to stay put. It's almost like we deleted our nucleus node, right? So how can we have them continue to fall into this and then eventually stop? Well, remember, we can work with our rate parameter to do that. So let's go ahead and choose Enable. I'll go ahead and start this back over. So we're filling in our, our play pit. Now what I'd like to do is go ahead and switch over to the, the rate by making sure we have the emitter tab selected. Now, watch this. When we play this through and turn off the particle system, now what we can do is go ahead and stop the animation, and we can now go ahead and select all of the objects here inside of the play pit. And with these particles selected, we can now head over to End Solver and choose Initial State Set from Current. Watch what's going to happen when we go ahead and start the animation back. This is going to be our new starting point. So if we were to go back to our emitter and increase our rate, you'll notice that when we start playing this through, this is our new starting point. Again, now we add particles on top of our existing particles. Awesome. Now, you'll also notice something else. You'll see that some of the particles, as they start to overflow, they're falling through our floor. Now, this might be kind of annoying because you might want a stopping point. You might want to have your particles fall onto the surface. Let's say if this was a child's play pit and you wanted to create a more realistic looking scene. Well, what would you do? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here's where we get to start working with our nucleus node. You'll see that we can do things like adjust our gravity from here. No need to go to fields and create a gravity field. Because it's all tied to this nucleus system, we can go ahead and adjust our air properties. We'll take a look at that. But underneath is where we find our ground plane. So let's go to make sure we turn that on. Use plane. Here we can adjust the, the origin. So as we start to increase any one of these axes, it's going to start lifting up this invisible plane. And the plane normal, this is how we can reorient that plane. So right now it's set to Y, meaning it's going to project towards the Y axis. Take a look at the y-axis here. You can see it's a cone, right? If you were to take a look at the end of that cone, the one that projects to the center of our manipulator, imagine a type of spotlight that projects down, and that's how you can figure out the direction that your plane is projecting down. All right, so right now it's projecting down the y-axis. So if we were to go ahead and start working with this and hit play, you'll notice that the particles are now going to interact with our floor. How cool is that? So then we can go ahead and stop the simulation. Or if you wanted to, you can go back to your rate. Let's go ahead and grab the emitter. Go ahead and play this through. And then we'll go ahead and drop our rate. Sweet. And then from there, once your particles kind of settle, that's why it's a good idea to work with several frames here so we can have our particles settle in. Once we do that, we can go ahead and stop the animation. We can go ahead and grab our particles again. And we can head over to... End solver, initial state, set from current, and now this is our new starting point. How cool. Awesome stuff. So we've just taken a look at how to work with end particles. There's more to cover, more exciting topics. But as of right now, we have an idea as to how to go in and create different particle types and how to kind of work with these tools.